<laughs> Look, some people saying, that's all right. Other people saying, yeah, right. <laughs> Look, 1.5 hours, people going to be doing like this. <laughs> Hitting the door. All right, let's go to work. Let's go to work. Luke chapter 6. Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a an house and dig deep and laid the foundation on rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built an house upon the earth, against which the streams did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was, was great. Praise God. For a text today, I want you to uh, tell your neighbor, dig deep. Dig deep. Praise God. Dig deep. Tell your other neighbor, dig deeper. Dig deeper. Praise God. There's something that God is after in this day to where if your, your, if your foundation is on a solid rock, praise God, it cannot be, cannot be beat down, but God is requiring the people of God today to dig deep. There is something that God has for you that does not reside on the surface of Christianity. Come on now, come on. There is something that God wants from the people of God to where we have collectively and individually have got to dig deeper yeah. in order to get what God has. Father God, we thank you for this time. We ask you to maximize this time and speak to us out of the volume of your holy book. Words of life, clarity, authority, and conviction. Father God, we stand at the ready to receive the infallible truth in your word today. Feed us till we want no more. Have your way. We'll be careful to give your name the glory, honor, and all the praise because you alone are worthy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. On your way down, take your name one more time. Dig deep. Dig deep. Amen. Amen. Beloved, beloved, there is an urgency in the atmosphere because of the turbulent times we are living in. We cannot just continually to casually just exist and let life be life because we have a real devil that Come we are to fight. Mm -hmm. Every day is another opportunity to unfold the wonderful blessings and miracle working power of God. Yeah. However, another day is also another day for the enemy to attempt to try to foil God's plan and his purpose in yeah. your life. Yeah. Beloved, this is a new season and this is a new day. So we should not fear the battle that comes from the enemy. However, we should be cognizant that we are engaged in warfare. Yeah, yeah. And we should seek God for weapons and answers in the midst of this battle. God told me to tell you today that he's about to do something miraculous in your life and in your house. But you've got to dig deep in order to receive it. Somebody say, in my life, in my life. and in my, house. in my house. God is about to do something wonderful in your life and in your house. Number one, you've got to realize the wealth of the investment that God has placed inside of you. If you go to 2 Kings chapter 4, we are introduced to this widow woman. And we meet her at a bad time. We meet her and God shows us her at a time where it seems as though she had nothing left. Everything she had, thought she had, was tied up in the prophet she was married to and the prophet died. So now the, the debt that she had is so great that she is paralyzed by her problem and her children are in trouble because she owes so much to the creditors that they're about to take her and her children and sell them for the debt that she owed. But God knew exactly what she needed and he knew exactly how bad she needed. As for you, God knows the treasure that he's hidden inside of you. He also knows what it takes for you to realize what God placed inside of you. Oftentimes, beloved, we view trouble as coming from the enemy. Mm. But I believe Pastor Moore said this morning that all things work together for yeah. the good of them. That means the good, the bad, the ugly, yeah. and the indifferent. Yeah. That whatever you're going through is an employee of God anyway. Yeah. And sometimes God just wants to know if he can trust you with a little bit of trouble. Because trouble, beloved, makes you pray like you have never prayed before. 
I wonder if anybody here ever been in trouble and it drove you down to your knees in prayer. I wonder if anybody ever thanked God after you got through the trouble that he even allowed the trouble to come. Sometimes things go too well in our lives yeah. and we forget about the God that gave us the things that we have. Yeah. Now watch this. God knows what's in you. So the enemy also knows what God has placed inside of you. Yeah. And he starts early trying to separate you from the purpose and the love and the call of God. He fights us hard, not necessarily for what's on us, but what's in us. He fights us sometimes even from childhood, trying to keep us from understanding yes. who we are yes. and whose we are. Yes. Most of us here today are products of prayer. Yes. If you're a product of prayer, just wave your hands at me. If you're here today because grandmama, oh my God, grandmama prayed for you. Yes. If you're here today because your mama prayed for you. Yes. If you're here today because mama and daddy refused to give up on you. When, yes. when the world threw you away, your mama and your daddy were in your secret closet praying that God fixes and heals you and he delivers you. And yes. if you are here today, you must know and understand that you are a product of somebody else's prayers. Yes. Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor real quick, I'm a product of prayer. Prayer. And when the enemy knows that you're a product of prayer, he starts to fight against your destiny. You may wonder, why am I in this much warfare when I don't have anything? On, it's simply because the enemy knows where you can go if you ever realize that prayer is gone before you. The enemy does not want you to realize that it's not about who left, it's not about who's coming, it's about what God placed on the inside of you. The devil don't want you to know that you are a sleeping giant, that if you ever wake up that his kingdom is in trouble. The devil don't want you to know that you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, fearfully and wonderfully made. The devil don't want you to know that deliverance is in your own voice. The devil don't want you to know that if you fall on your own knees, you don't have to act, wait for the pastor to pray for you. You can pray your own self through. The devil don't want you to know that what you've been through is what you've been through. And God already knew it before you went through it. And it's going to make you better for where you are now. The devil doesn't want you to know that we've been made into it for a night. But joy is coming to the don't want you to know that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. The devil don't want you to know that wealth and health, health and healing are in your household. The devil don't want you to know uh, that wealth and riches uh, are in your household. Uh, it belongs to the sinner now, but it's laid up for you. Uh, the devil don't want you to know uh, that you've never seen the righteous forsaken, uh, nor your seed begging bread. Uh, if you're righteous, uh, your children will get home sometime or not. The devil don't want you to know huh, that every day you make the wake up list, huh, you give that joker another headache. Huh. The devil don't want you to know huh, that every time you put your feet down, huh, it's a slap in his face. Huh. The devil don't want you to know huh, that your mama may be cold, huh, your daddy may be gone, huh, but God has you here for a purpose. I thought I was tired, praise God. God has you here for a calling. And you've got to understand the investment God has deposited on the inside of you. When you understand that, you really further understand that trouble is a withdrawal of that investment. Y'all missed that. When God deposits something in you, he comes back periodically to pull out of you what he put in you. How can you know how strong you are if there's never any resistance. I thought I was in church. How can you know how anointed you are if people don't rub you the wrong way? People don't catch you off in traffic. Your boss don't act up. You don't you pray to God to make a dollar out of it. How do you know how anointed you are if you never tested? Yeah. The test proved that you took the class. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Tell your neighbor, don't even take it personal. The devil don't even know you well enough to fight you. The, de the devil is fighting you because he sees God on you. You should take it personal if you're never in any warfare. I feel like preaching a little bit. If you're never in any warfare, it's because
because when the devil looks at you, he sees a mirror of himself. But when God, the devil looks at you and he sees the Holy Spirit working on you, if he sees angels flying around you, then he's allergic to your anointing and he fights against what God is trying to do in your life. So don't settle. Don't settle for mediocrity. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we just ask the Lord. I'm used to do this in the old church. Another day, Another day. the Lord has kept me. Yeah. Lord, just give me one more day. Let me put one foot in front of the other. Lord, I, I'm barely making it, but I thank you for life, health, and strength. And that was the old church because that's what they used to get by. But today, God is trying to excel us past mediocrity. He's trying to get us to ask him for something that's worth him getting up off his throne to do in the first place. Oh, my God. That God is tired of our mediocre living. Our mediocre praise. You ever came to church and gave God a piece of a praise? You ever came to church and you were so tired and said, Lord, I'm just... I'm barely here today. They better be glad I even made it to church. And you give God, you give God what's left out of your praise. You, you give God and the preacher up here uh, kicking and screaming and spitting, trying to get you to yeah. give God praise and the praise team singing to the glory of God. And you sit in the church in your feelings about something. Yeah. You sit in the church worried about what's going on in your house, man. God is saying, if you praise me in my house, then I'll visit your house. Come on, somebody. I'm gonna show you something in a minute. You will hear me say house quite a lot because God is trying to do something in somebody's house in here today. God is saying, if you take care of my house, then I'm God enough to take care of your house. But you got to take care of my house. So if you take care of my house, I'm not like you. I can be everywhere at the same time. I ain't got to check to see if you made it to United Faith. I know you made it to United Faith because some angels, some word will come up to heaven and say, Lord, please send me to their house because they're in your church giving you praise all their bills are due their bodies acting funny but they're still in church with both hands raised they're still in church giving you all the glory God that I know I know where you are but we've got to move beyond mediocre living because somebody in here is on the verge of something spectacular about to happen in your life. Ooh, I don't know who you are. You ain't even got to Jesus. identify yourself. But somebody, you feel it in your spirit that you're on the very cusp. You're on the verge of something about to break in your house. Watch this. In your business. In your home. In your mind. God, oh, God. God is about to send somebody they're not even going to know why they're investing in you. They're not even going to understand why they're giving to you. There used to be your enemies and your biggest critics but God is about to turn your critics into your contributor. If that hits your house, somebody got to say hallelujah. Oh, he's about to make somebody to contribute to a dream you gave up on. He's about to make somebody Come shake. You ever had that good handshake? Amen. Yeah, Anybody ever had that handshake where you shook the hand? Oh, God bless you. And you say, oh, God bless you. Y'all ever had that handshake? God's about to give somebody a sudden. Watch this. Mediocre thinking leads to mediocre speaking. Mediocre speaking leads to mediocre living. I call this thinking, stinking thinking. It's a stinking thought. When it allows you to stay in the land of mediocrity. Come on now. It stinks in God's nostrils when the people of God don't strive for excellence Come on now. in his presence. Come on. Did you not know that God wants your best? Yes. He wants your best tithe. Yes. Your best offering. Yes. Your best praise. Yes. The best of your time. My God. God wants your very best. We're, we're, we're on the verge of getting a building and, and God is blessing us and he's sending us to where we're able to get a building sometime here soon, praise God. Uh -huh, yeah. He even sent somebody this morning to prophesy a million dollar loan over yeah. the church. Wow. Praise God. Yeah. Amen. That, 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 that ain't why, that's not why I told you. You can clap those. Oh, God. Yes. 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 The more hand clap from that one, the better. Yes. But, but the, the, the question that I keep getting is when we get this building, are we going to continue to have 8 o'clock services? <laughs> okay, watch me, watch me. They keep asking, are we going to continue having 8 o'clock services? Because 
during 8 o'clock, you don't have time for anything else to go on. The praise is phenomenal. God moves in a mighty way. And the earlier we get up and everybody putting skin in the game by driving to my dad's church to open the doors and have service. And we are having it first thing in the morning. Before most people get up to have their first cup of coffee, we don't got people slain in the spirit all out on the floor. Musicians all over. And I say, Lord, if we get a building, can we maybe still have these early services? Because we are afraid to move from the landmark where God has already shown, oh my God, that he is faithful. He is faithful. Because we give him the first. The first fruit of our day. You see, you don't have time, especially when you drive for 35, 40 minutes. To, you ain't got time for a whole lot to go on. And anybody that get up and come to Chosen Ministries Christian Center early in the morning, they come and expecting something. So we don't have lazy services. Right? You got to push people to pray. No, they made it all the way there. They can't come on. Somebody better bring something up in this house. <laughs> You better bring something up in this house today. But that pushes us beyond mediocre thinking because God built the house. Before he built the house, he dug deep. He dug deep. Before God built United Faith Christian Center, he dug deep in the heart and the mind of your pastor. Because he knew, and, and we talked that uh, we talked actually before. Before she planted the church, God already had the anointing on her. But it wasn't until she realized that God had the anointing on her that she moved forward and started this church. You see, God had her in the proving ground. Yes. My God, my God, my God. <laughs> he, he had her in a, in, in a, in a betwixt and between place. Yes. He had her, like I told you guys this morning, she's an oblong that was trying to fit in a circle. And no matter where she went, that she would not fit in because God was not allowing her to fit into circles when God was causing her to start her own, her own circle. But he had to dig deep in her mind, in her heart, and in her house before she could adequately or accurately do God's will. My next point, beloved, it's not about who left. If you go to 2 Kings again, the prophet died, and everything that the widow had was tied up in the prophet. Uh -huh. So when he left, it left a vacuum in her life to where he probably paid all the bills and did everything, and he was of the school of the prophets. So when he left, there was a void that was left in her house between her and her children. My God. So when the prophet walked into the house, she began to immediately inundate him with the problems that happened after her husband's death. Mm. His death created a vacuum that she could not fill, and the creditors were coming for what was owed. Mm. Sometimes, beloved, God will allow separation so he can manifest saturation. Oh, that was good to me. I'll say it again. Sometimes God will allow separation so he can manifest saturation. Sometimes we depend too much on what other people bring to the table. Sometimes we depend too much on what everybody else is bringing and we just want to sit down and eat. But God says you've got something to bring to the table yeah. too. You've yeah. got an anointing on your life. Yeah. It's not about who left. It's about who will never leave. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Who this widow was, where the woman was, was camouflaged by who she had. Mm. She didn't know that God could use her too. So a great debt was created so God could show her great deliverance. Whenever great deliverance is needed, a great debt is created in front of that great deliverance. One of the greatest deliverances we can get today, beloved, is getting delivered from people. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm delivered from you. I'm delivered from you. If they didn't look at you, that was the right neighbor, praise God. You ought to turn to that same neighbor again and say, I'm delivered from you. Amen. That's not a bad thing. <laughs> to be delivered from somebody is not to cut them off. It's to be delivered from what they think about you. Sometimes people can't even praise God because of what somebody thinks about them. Sometimes people quench and hold back their praise. The church always has a crazy praiser in the mix somewhere. Every church has at least one person that if they ever break loose, they're going to set the whole church on fire. But sometimes we quench who we are 
what God has called us because we care more about what our neighbor thinks than what God thinks. And one of the greatest deliverances a person can have is getting delivered from the way other people think about you. I wonder if there's anybody in church today that don't care about how people think about how you praise God. Come on, somebody talk to me. You don't care. You don't you think when, when, when I first got saved, let me tell you this real quick. When I first got saved, I was wild. I, I, I praise God. I didn't mind. I would dance. I would run. I would cry. I went to the altar, I believe, every Sunday. My bishop preached 52 Sundays out of the year, except for when Pastor Simmons preached. But I believe I made it about 47, 48 times. I, I hit that altar. But I praise the Lord hard. I danced before the Lord. I cried and I screamed. When I joined the choir, I would pump my fist when I sung. And I gave God my very best praise because I wasn't ashamed. I, I didn't care what people thought because they already knew everything about me. They knew about my drug habit. They knew about my alcoholism. They knew about my court case. They knew about everything that went on. So when I came to church, I didn't come to see none of them jokers. I came because I must see Jesus. So when I got in church, I, I gave God a crazy praise. Yeah. I lifted my hands up from the time I felt it to the time I woke up. I, yeah. I didn't care what nobody thought of because I knew. Yeah. 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 It didn't matter what they thought because they already thought what they thought. Right. And sometimes you got to give people something to watch. When people are watching you and they're looking for something to go wrong, you you got to give them something to look at. When the spirit of the Lord comes upon your heart, sometimes you got to go on and dance like David danced. You ought to tap your neighbor and say, you ought to go on and dance. When the spirit of the Lord comes upon your heart, don't hold it back. Don't quench the spirit. Just let the Lord. Uh, this is how false prophets are able to take advantage of the people of God. Because we walk around with our spirit open. Wanting somebody to tell us how Come wonderful on. we Come are. On now. Come on. When you really, all you have to do is go to God and he'll tell you how wonderful you are. You see, sometimes we don't want to go to God because God won't tell us how wonderful we are until he tell us how messed up we are first. See, God, like God, is, God is the best confidant you'll ever have. He's going to tell you what you need to hear, when you need to hear it, how you need to hear it. He's a God of love, but he doesn't cut any corners when it comes to your deliverance. God is not going to tell you your blessing is around the corner. He's going to tell you your deliverance is around the corner. When you go get that deliverance, the blessing will be a byproduct. I lost y'all right there. Y'all were praising God so good. What happened? What happened? I, uh, sometimes we find ourselves captive by the creditors of life. Essentially, creditors put a yoke around our necks and squeeze until we pop. A creditor is simply somebody you owe. That's all a creditor is. Anybody in church got a creditor today? Anybody gonna raise their hand? You got a mortgage, you got a creditor. You got a rent, you got a creditor. You got a credit card that you can't keep under control, you got a creditor. If you got a car loan, you got a creditor. Praise God. A creditor is simply somebody you owe. Now let me show you something in the spirit. A creditor in the spirit is somebody you think you owe spiritually to. Oh. So somebody that did something for you and every time they see you, they're looking at you sideways. Uh -huh. A creditor can be somebody, see sometimes we walk around begging somebody to love us. Begging for somebody to validate us. Begging for somebody to be there in our corner. But God told me to tell you, you can't expect people to love you more than you love yourself. Yeah. If you don't show yourself love, it doesn't matter how much you give to that man or give to that woman. In fact, true love ventilates itself by how much they give to you. Yeah. So if somebody says they love you, you can measure and grade the fervency of their love by how much they want to give to you. Yeah. If they say I love you in order for you to give them something, beloved, that's not really love. Uh -huh. I, I dare say that's lust for what you have or who you are. Uh -huh. But true love will give to you in spite of what you give back. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. true love. True love. Yeah. So sometimes we find ourselves captive by the creditors of life. We owe people financially, socially, emotionally, 
and spiritually, and some of us are in debt in more ways than we can pay. But the Spirit of the Lord has come this morning, this afternoon. Praise God. Oh my goodness. What? Woo, Jesus, I didn't cut my clock on either. Praise God. I'm, somebody pull my coattail if I get in the 2.5 hour range. <laughs> but God came to tell you that he's about to release somebody from their debt today. He's about, you can take that financially, socially, emotionally, or spiritually, but God wants to release somebody from the fervency of a debt that you owe. But he also told me to tell you the answer is in your house. Oh. Somebody say, it's in my house. Oh, my God. I, I'm not hooping right now, but I'm preaching. Your answer is in your house. Elijah the prophet came to the widow woman and said, what am I to do for thee? The first question never gets an answer because it was too high for her depressed mind to answer. Beloved, there is a level of depression to where scriptures don't even have the same effect that it would. There is a level of depression when you meet that person that is depressed to that level, you don't need to quote scripture. You don't need to tell them high and lofty things. You don't need to break down the Greek or the Hebrew. You need to meet them right where they are and simply tell them the Lord still loves you. Yeah. God still is going to make a way for you yeah. And if you want to really go With your anointed self If you might meet somebody in need Pull out of your pocket yeah. Go get your bank card Give them something tangible Jesus. Yeah. See how quiet it got Wish I had a pen to drop Wish I had a pen to drop You cannot quote scripture to a man that's hungry That's right That's right if the man is hungry, you need to pull out your card and go to Burger King or Food Lion, fill his belly so that he can hear the scripture that you have, uh, that you have to quote. But the answer to your dilemma is in your house. Perhaps you are waiting for Pastor Judy Moore to preach you out of the bad place. Perhaps you're waiting for the praise team to sing you out of a bad place. But I come to tell you, while I got the mic, that it does not matter how anointed your preacher is, and she is highly anointed. She cannot preach you out of something that you need to get delivered from in your house. She can lead you to the water, but you got to bend down and drink the water for yourself. But the answer to your problem is in your house. So in absence to an answer to the first question, he asked her another question. Since she didn't answer what he could do for her, he asked her, well, what you got in your house? Mm. 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 All right. Read 2 Kings chapter 4, uh -huh. starting at verse 1. Uh -huh. He asked her, well, so, so you don't know what you want me to do for you. Uh -huh. There must be something in your house. What do you have in your house? Uh -huh. In other words, there's something in your house you have not discerned that's great. Good, Lord. Good God Almighty. Whoa. Now, her answer Blew me away. When God showed me the, 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 the revelation in the answer, mm -hmm. it blew me away. But before I get to that, if you really want to see a move of God in your life and in your house, stop crying about what you don't have. Take inventory about what you have left. Yeah. I'll say that again. If you really want to experience a move of God in your house, stop crying about what you don't have. Let me add a caveat to that. Stop looking at what the Martins have. Stop looking at what the Pates have. Stop looking at what the Stewarts have. Stop looking at what your neighbor has and look at what you have in your house. When we stop measuring and grading the anointing by what other people have, God will show us that there is something great in my house. I may not have the money you have, but I have an anointing to make money. I may not have the car you have, but I have an anointing in take your eyes off of what other people have. God will illuminate. Tell your neighbor, take inventory in your own house. What you have in your house is divine. Did you not know millionaires will commit suicide if they lose that money? Did you not know millionaires are just as crazy, more crazy than people that don't have? You see, the blessing in not having is when God gives it to you, you give him the glory for it. There's a blessing that, that I didn't know growing up that I was even poor. I didn't 
ain't no spaghetti came with sauce. <laughs> I didn't know that you put meat in, in, in the sauce and add it. I didn't know that. I, I thought everybody ate spaghetti like that. I thought everybody got cheese on a block. I thought everybody ate mayonnaise sandwiches. <laughs> Y'all don't know, y'all, see, y'all, 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 y'all don't know in the world I'm talking about. I didn't even know we didn't have a lot because mama worked miracles in the kitchen. <laughs> mama made sure we had a meal every night. But see, what we had to somebody else, they were called trash. But to us, it was a treasure. I didn't know. That you could have a TV in every room uh -huh. when I grew up. Uh -huh. When we wanted to watch TV, we crowded around uh -huh. that, that floor model in the living room uh -huh. with the with the, the grip pliers on to turn the channel with. Uh -huh. You had to go between UHF and VHF. Uh -huh. And daddy always used us when the signal went bad. Well, go back there and hold that wire on. Uh -huh. Had to untwist the clothes hanger, stick it in the back and twist it until you got a... Y'all don't know what I'm talking about then. <laughs> we didn't have the amenities that people have, but I saw my daddy kiss my mama every day. My mom and daddy told me they loved me every night before we went to sleep. They never let a day go by without telling us how wonderful we were, how great we could be in life. So we didn't have things, but we had a family unit and we had love. And to me, that meant more. So what we had in the house was divine. My mama and my daddy. And they told us how much they loved us. And coincidentally, one of the indictments against the church is that we get too used to spiritual gifts that God places in the church. Did you not know your pastor is a gift? It is. You don't believe me? Grab the newspaper and, or Google Baptist churches without pastors. <laughs> or just Google churches without pastors. Then you will realize your pastor is a gift. Uh -huh. But what happens is we get used to the gift. And we call extraordinary ordinary. All right. We have digressed and condescended the gifts that are in the church to just being other people. Mm -hmm. And we've let other people tell us, oh, they put their pants on like you put your pants on. Uh -huh. Ain't nothing special about them. Uh -huh. And then when you get too used to your preacher, you will not extrapolate the gifts that is inside of her. Come on, come on, come on. Your preacher can only preach to the level you are able to receive. Come on, man. Come on. You want high and lofty revelation, but you don't want to receive rebuke or correction. Right. You want to preach on the mountaintop, but you stroll in the church at 1115. You right. stroll in the church and you ain't paid tithes in three months. You right. stroll in the church and think it's about you, but then you want your preacher to preach you happy or preach you on the law. God's going to keep her at a level to where you're operating. On, if you really want to extrapolate greatness out of your preacher, push that anointing out of her. Jesus. Pray for her when you get home. Push her into realms of consciousness she didn't even think existed. Every now and then you ought to give her the handshake and put something in her hand. And she might be your preacher, but she still has that. Sometimes preachers just need to know if their people appreciate the labor that they give. Sometimes we call divine norm. That is an indictment against the church. Watch this. It's not just the pastor that's a gift. Uh -huh. Thank you. I told my people this morning, when I roll up in church, you bet believe you just received a gift. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I showed sure it. I said, when Dwayne Shaw rolls up in church, the church has just received a gift. Mm -hmm. And I walk in church like I know that God is on my side. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine if everybody walked in church knowing that they have something to offer in that service? Come on now. If everybody came in with a praise on their lips and uh, the anointing riding out of their spirit, then we could go higher yeah. than we ever dreamed of going. Yeah. 
So if you sit in the tell your neighbor you're sitting aside again. You sit beside again. again. Some of you didn't say it. You don't believe it. Tell your other neighbor, you sit beside again. Sit beside again. That's right. Oh, y'all still don't get it. Say it ain't my fault. It ain't my fault. You don't want to unwrap it. You don't want to unwrap it. That's right. Sometimes we don't extrapolate the gifts. Because we don't like the rapper that came in. We don't like the way they look on the outside or who they're associated with or who they know. But you don't know. You can't see what's in me no more than you can see what's inside the alabaster box. Come on now. You can't see the anointing in me until you crack this vessel or you pull on it that I pour out. You don't see what's in your neighbor until you pull on that anointing that they have. Amen. And God is saying that the indictment against the church is there. We don't extrapolate the gifts because we don't want to go deeper. That's it. In order for you to truly know me, you got to go past who, what you know about me. That's uh -huh. right. That's uh -huh. right. You got to go past I'm a preacher, mm -hmm. the husband of one wife, mm -hmm. father of four children, mm -hmm. live in here or stay there or have done this or went to school there. You got to go deeper. Yeah. If you really want to know me, first of all, ask me. That's right. That's right. That's right. Sit down and have a little talk right. with me. You see, sometimes we get attracted to people's anointings mm -hmm. or the glory on their life mm -hmm. but because we never sat down and heard their story That's of their right. life. That's right. You sit down and listen to people's story, then you will say, man, you have really got the Lord on your side. Yes. I talk about uh, Brother Larry Stewart a lot because he has glory on his life. Yeah, yes, he has more glory than he realizes. That's right. That's he comes right. from a family, a lineage of priests and prophets. Yes. Brenda does too. Yeah. Even so, to down to their babies. Yes. Nelly Poo. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to call your nickname? No. I don't know. <laughs> Nelly Poo and Tiddle. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> but <laughs> they are anointed yes. by God. Yes. Because God never gave up on them. That's right. God didn't allow their parents to give up on them. That's right. God didn't allow their grandparents to give on them. Right. And now they're walking in the surface of an anointing. And God said, baby, it's time for you to go deeper. Come on now. Wow. Time for you to go deeper. He told me to tell us, Cedric. He told me to tell Brother Cedric. You just saying deliverance into your own life. Yeah. When you started talking about walking in authority, God was saying, I, I called you to sing that song because now I'm calling you to walk in authority. Yeah. When you were singing, I'm, I'm living in the overflow, God just kept showing me overflow streams coming your way. God yeah. giving you choices and decisions about. Yeah. Lord, yeah. Yeah. He said, that, 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 that's your song. That might be your pastor's song, but that's your song. God is about to cause you to walk in an overflow. And, and somebody that walks in an overflow, every step they take, God leaves a puddle of the anointing behind. He said he's about to open up the windows. Somebody said windows. windows. Windows of heaven pour you out a blessing that you won't even have room enough to receive. And when he does, you've got to take that mantle and walk in authority. You've got to walk in the authority that God gave and put on your life. You are also from a lineage of priests. The Haynes family is a lineage of musicians and singers and prophets and priests and preachers. And God said it's time for you to go deeper so you can walk in that anointing. You've been running for a long time. You feel the spirit of God even when you lay down at night. You feel the anointing of God when when the enemy's tugging you from two different ways, God is saying, be still and know that he is God. The enemy you see today, God is about to eradicate overflow. I saw when you were singing it. Thank you, Jesus. He was saying, I'm living in the overflow. Yes, yes, yes. Watch this. The anointing on that young man is so powerful. Come Anybody on, that sing that song with him that really believe it, God said, I'm about to give you overflow too. Yes. Oh, y'all missed it. Y'all yes. missed it. I'm living in the overflow. Yes. When it was, I was singing it right with him. Me too. I, I'm living in the overflow. <laughs> you see, church, I'm off, my, I'm off the oh, no. church. It's full of waves. Yes, God. 
Church, that's why you can't get mad when service is dry. Uh -huh. Because church is about waves. Yes. When there is a tidal wave hit the church, oh, my tap your neighbor and say, you got to get on. You got to get on. When the tidal wave comes, you got to ride that wave. Yeah. You got to, because when it's dry, you won't have to pull on the time when it was hot. Yeah, yeah. That every time you come won't be an on high experience. Come Sometimes on. God will step on all your toes and send you home saying, Lord, I can do better than that. Uh -huh. But when the wave comes, you got to ride that wave. Yes. And get whatever God has desired for you to get because you are anointed yes. for this. Thank you, all right. I don't Thank even know how much time I got. Left. All the time. Yeah. Yeah. I feel yeah. naked without my clock. <laughs> I should have looked up there before I started preaching. But anyway, he asked her, oh, what's in your house? And she said, well, all I have is a pot of oil. All I have is an anointing to survive. All I have is a pot, a vessel with anointing in the vessel. Tell your neighbor, that's all you need. That's all, all you need. need. All you need is a vessel with anointing. Mm, my God. And what you think is an anointing to survive, God calls it anointing to thrive. Right. You think you just got an anointing for one more day. She, she didn't realize how much she had left. Because God had not yet added super to her okay. natural. Right. She was looking at what she naturally had. Uh -huh. my God, my the God. prophet was asking what she supernaturally could gain. All right. All right. See, I want you to go home today and take another look in your house. Uh -huh. Because there's something in your house that is supernatural. It could be the relationship you have with your babies. Yeah, yeah. It could be the drive that you have for doing better. Yeah. It could be a dream that you have of a business that you don't have the resources for it to come to pass. Mm -hmm. God said, revisit, dust off that dream because your investor is on the way. Hey! Oh, nobody grab that. Oh, and nobody grab that. Your investor is on the way. Yeah. Dust off that dream. Don't worry about your resources. Don't worry about who knows you. Don't worry about who. Don't worry about what you even know. That God is about to bring investors in your path. My Lord, my Lord. And you just got to know when this is a God thing. And don't call supernatural normal. So she had this oil in this pot. But most importantly, she had faith. So the prophet tells her, go tell your sons to go out and borrow some vessels. Mm -hmm. right. She's already in debt. Mm -hmm. Already in threat of selling her and her sons to the creditors. Mm -hmm. Prophet comes in and asks her two questions. She answers the second one. And he says, well, just tell your sons, go borrow some vessels and not a few. <clears throat> so it's time to go tell your sons to put you further in debt. Because in my mind, if I'm already in debt, why am I going to go borrow more to put me further in debt? But think about it. How many times have we borrowed more after we were already? Let me, let me, let me ask this side. I forgot the Martins on that side. That's the money side. How many times? <laughs> how many times have we already been in debt? Borrowed more on top of the debt we have. How many times have we borrowed debt to pay debt? Yeah. You're already in debt and now you're borrowing more on top of the debt that you already have. How many times have we borrowed with the hopes of paying it back knowing that if you borrow, you might can't pay it back? How many times have we given to somebody and it says, I'm going to pay you back? And then a month goes by. Then... Two months go by, and because you lent it with expectation of return, that person in prison every time they see you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You may not even be thinking about them giving it back, but every time they see you, like, man, I got you, I got you. I, 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 I had a hard time right now, but I'm going to give it back to you. And that person is essentially in debt in prison because of what you allowed them to borrow. So this woman, he told her to go borrow a whole bunch of vessels because God was teaching her the theory of spiritual economics. In, this, in the theory of economics, it goes by supply and demand. Y'all heard that, right? I know the babies know it. If you're in fifth, sixth grade, they teach it now. 
I didn't hear it till high school, but they teach it now in the earlier grade. Supply and demand. The economy runs by supply and demand. When the demand exceeds the supply, you fall into recession or depression. But when the supply exceeds the demand, then the prices go down. So in the spirit, we should always have a demand because God always has a supply. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the spirit, we cannot demand more than God has a supply. Because the Bible says God will supply all your needs according to his riches that's in glory by Christ Jesus. Her blind obedience activated an adequate level of God's anointing to supply. So God wanted her neighbors to know. He wanted her creditors to know. He wanted everyone to know that he would do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ask or even think. So he told her, get the vessels, go into the house, close the door, and pour out. So when you're really ready to receive a move from God, you've got to go in the house, close the door, and pour out. Yeah. Watch this. I have to update it to today's time. You have to go in the house, yeah. cut your cell phone off. Come on now. Put the remote under the couch. Yeah. Go in your secret closet yeah, yeah. and pour out. That's it. That's it. When you're really ready to receive from God, you've got to cut everybody and everything off for That's a it. season long enough for you to get before God and you got to pour out and know that God is your source. Yeah. So they went in the house, they closed the door. And they poured out. And God began to pour oil in the vessels. Every time the child bought another vessel, God filled it with oil. Every time the child bought another vessel, God filled it with oil. He filled it until they ran out of vessels. When they ran out of vessels to fill, the Bible says the oil stayed. Or the oil stopped flowing. The oil flowed because they had a great demand. That they put on God's supply. Uh -uh. All right, all right. As I hasten to a close. Yeah, yeah. Somebody in here today. You got a great demand. You got something. You need God to do. In a spectacular. Type of way. Yeah. Yeah. You love the Lord. You're serving God. But truth be told. There's a vacuum. Mm. In your life. My God. Something My God. is missing. Jesus. I don't know who I'm talking to. Jesus. But God has been on the prophetic all day long. My God. Yes. Yes. My God. There is a vacuum in your life. Jesus. And you've got a great supply. You've got a great demand. Mm -hmm. And God sent me here to tell you he's ready to meet that demand. My Lord. But you've got to go deeper. You've got to dig deeper. This, you see, the whole thing ties in is that the widow woman would have never had the miracle if one, the prophet hadn't come to her house. Right. Two, if the prophet didn't have uh, enough foresight and discernment to let her know you got something in your house that you are not uh, extrapolating the divine from. Yeah. So God had to send the prophet. Even after he sent the prophet, she still didn't have the right answer. So God had the prophet to show her what she didn't realize she had. Somebody in there today, you've got the anointing for your house. My God. Or if you go take an inventory, there is an anointing in your house that you've got to recognize. For some of you, it's your babies. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. Oh my God. Jesus. For some of you, it's restoring the relationship between you and your husband or you and your wife. For some of you, it's simply walking in the authority that Brother Cedric sang about today. Yeah. Watch this, and I'm going to close. As you take inventory in your house, look for physical items that may be cursed. Some things we buy from the flea market and buy from here and buy from that place. You don't know who prayed over that little statue or that picture. As you take inventory in your house, 
spend some time in your baby's room when they're on the Xbox or on YouTube. And you might you may find they're inviting demons in their room. As you take inventory, what are you watching? That's right. That's right. That's right. What what what's flooding your eye gates? That's right. What's flooding your ear gates? And sometimes the blessing is simply waiting on you to change. You see, I expected it to get quiet right here. Because I'm about to pray. We're going to pray and we're going to just, if it's for you, then it's for you. If it's not, then you can take it to somebody else. But as you take inventory, because God, God does not mince words. God does not make mistakes. One thing that I do, I never preach a sermon unless I feel like God has said it. So sometimes I'm up all Saturday night. Like Pastor Moore was saying, sometimes I'm up Sunday morning. And I got, I got gigabytes of sermons. I've been writing ever since I've been saved. But I have sermons that God has not yet released me to preach. I preach sermons two or three times. And I say, Lord, give me something new. Or let me preach some of this stuff I wrote back in 2007. But he said, no, this is what they need. And I told the Lord, when he saved me, I would do whatever you tell me to do. However crazy it looks. If this is what you believe, if this is what they need, this is what I'm going to give them. So one thing I do know is that when God sends a word, he has a target for that word. There was a target in here somewhere. But God sent that word. Yeah. Told me to tell somebody today to dig deeper. Yeah. Dig deep. There is, there is a blessing on the other side of your digging. Jesus. Jesus. There's a blessing. But take inventory. Stand to your feet. We're going to pray. Take inventory of what you have in your house. Sit down and have a talk. Have a family. Y'all remember when... When, when kitchen tables, when dining room tables were to eat around. Not to put your best china on so people can see how, how wonderful you are. <laughs> Have a family discussion. See where you really are. See what's really going on in your house. Because there is something divine in your house. But watch out for things that we have collected that may be bringing bad spirits in our house. Did you not know when you move into a new home, you're supposed to sweep that home first? Mm -hmm. Anybody know what sweeping a home means? Mm -hmm. I mean, you call the intercessors, you pull out the oil, and you go through that house, and you pray on it from door to door. In case there are restless spirits residing in that house. Trevor, now then, you got the inventory. What's going on? You are neglecting your partner's prayer life. Could be you are neglecting your partner's work ethic. It could be you are neglecting your partner altogether. Preaching to myself. Sometimes I'm so busy in church, I neglect that I have a wife that's sitting doing things that I don't have to as hard as I work I don't feel like I should come home and fold up clothes and help the kids with different, different things because I work two jobs and I teach them if I get home all I want that I ain't can I, can I be just real I'm transparent before they even get to know me. Yeah. All because of who I am. Yeah. I'm working, trying to build a kingdom. Sometimes he's involved. Sometimes the decision to leave Outlaw Community and start Children Ministries had a, a trickle-down effect that affected my wife and my baby. Forties. Sometimes they do it in they found that my daughter has a listening ear. 
And they'll reach out to her trying to figure out telling her that they're in warfare just like I am. The greatness that I'm looking for in me, house gets on one accord and starts to plumb the line. Somebody said the line was plumb this morning. <laughs> but when God plumbed the line, then God can send the outside sources because the inside sources are all on one accord. So God sent me here to United Faith Christian Center today simply to tell you to dig deeper. Dig deeper. You have graduated. You are no longer in high school. You are now matriculating in the college of God. <laughs> in college, they expect more than they did in high school. You've got to study on your own now. You've got to get your own start together. God, you have elevated. God has elevated you to another level. So now he is expecting more. He is expecting more. He is expecting more. He's expecting more. You got to dig deeper. You got to dig pray like you never had. You got to go deeper. You got to take a closer look. I know you're mad. I know you're bitter. I know you're frustrated. I know you're on the verge of calling it quits, but you've got to take another look. Dig a little bit deeper. There is something. I saw this picture. This guy was digging for diamonds. And the guy below him was digging for diamonds. The guy below him hit a diamond, pulled the diamond out, showed the guy on top the diamond that he had. So the guy on top killed the guy with the diamond, went down and started digging where he was digging. Not realizing he was two inches from a whole row of diamonds. He got mad at the guy that had something and went and started digging in his well. If he had just kept plowing on the guy where he was. That man had his one talent. God was about to give him ten. So God said, dig deeper. The altar's open. If you want to come to the altar, we're going to pray today. We're going to pray. If God spoke to you today, praise God. We're just going to pray. We're going to pray and pray. If you're struggling with the answer, Grab your husband's hand, grab your wife's hand, grab your children's hand. Y'all come down to this altar. The answer to your dilemma or the answer to what you are looking for.